Welcome back to IGN Live at Comic-Con. Now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is a bold new take on New York City's most beloved mutant reptiles, rats, and rapscallions. Here to tell us all about it is the movie's director, Jeff Rowe. Hi, Jeff. Hello, hi. <laughs> Thank uh, you for having me here. <laughs> I, I don't know, I want to approach this the interview from two different angles. One is like the adult journalist version and the other is the five-year-old that's ecstatic that they're making a new Ninja Turtles movie. So I guess that leads into my first question. It feels like there's been a Ninja Turtles reboot sort of every decade or so. And each yeah. one of those has connected with different audiences. Um, everyone has grown up with their own version of the Turtles, which is awesome. Uh, when working on this film, were there different elements that you plucked from different eras of Turtles, or was like one dominant one that inspired everything? The dominant one, I, th I think for me, was really 87 TV series, the first two live action movies, especially Secret of the Ooze, and the toys. Like that's, you know, I'm 37, I was born in 86, so like that was like just mainlined into my brain as a, as a child, and it, it was really formative for me, and uh, uh, our production designer, Yashar Kasai, like has that same love, and uh, uh, artistically, visually, like that's what we wanted to uh, evoke and preserve, and. Um, lean into. Yeah, you, you speak in my language. Yeah, I just check yes to all the things you just said. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but listen, I mean, turtles have had so many different, you know, mutations, iterations, generations, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you've, this is the, one of the first times they're all actually played by teenagers. Yeah. W was there any kind of like a, a generational gaps in terms of like? You know, pop culture references, their oh, point of references. 100%, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think I think we started in a place where, uh, you know, like, uh, Seth and I wrote a bunch of lines that were like, this is this is how a teenager talks, right? This is how they <laughs> relate based on our, our experience being teenagers. And then the kids would say it, and it would just feel uh, alien uh, uh, coming out of their mouths. And, and we did this thing that is not really done in animation, where we recorded them all together at the same time, talking over each other, interjecting each other, making fun. It's a nightmare for sound. Everybody wanted to kill us in, in post, but um, we did it. Uh, uh, and so much of the life and banter and what makes it feel so natural just comes from them riffing with each other. Um, and then we'd say like, uh, we're trying to say this in the story. How would you say that? Like, how would you actually have this conversation? Uh, and we would record them. Uh, uh, we would record in between takes and and listen to them just talk about what YouTube videos they like and uh, yeah it, it was uh, they wrote they kind of wrote their own references. <laughs> that's that's incredible. Um... Yeah, I, I think there's nothing more awkward than just like being a grown up and trying to predict <laughs> a child or a teacher. In the parlance right. of the kids, it's cringe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a bunch of classic Ninja Turtle movies that I loved as a kid. I think I knew right out, out the gate that outside of like the Shredder and the Foot Soldiers, um, they were missing that rogues gallery of yeah. weird, bizarre, toyetic mutants. This movie fixes that. Like, <laughs> How, how important was that? Like, there are so many awesome villains in this movie, and the second I started seeing their, the character posters pop up, I'm like, they're doing it. They're getting everything right. It was not. It was actually not part of the uh, the plan uh, uh, initially. You know, we were like, oh, we'll have Bebop and Rocksteady, and then our character designer Woodrow White, White uh, did this painting of them, and I'm like, these look so cool. Uh, can you, can you draw like Ray Filet for me? Like more as a fan, <laughs> like, uh, and then he would do a sketch of that. Like I'd pretend it was gonna be in the movie, but he would do such a good job and the design would look so cool. Uh, I would show these things to Seth and he'd be like, I think we have to put this in the movie now. Remember, and then we would just start remembering toys. We would remember like Mondo Gecko and how he had like a roller skate on his tail. And we're like, yep. that was such a funny, cool detail. Let's put that character in the movie. God, that's awesome. Are there yeah. any uh, any specific toy callouts that are going to really specifically appeal to toy nerds? I mean, I think the Mondo Gecko roller skate yeah. is is there, and, and we're proud of that. Uh, uh, Scumbug, uh, it's hard to see it, but her brain is exposed like it is in the toys. There's a lot of little things from uh, from those designs that we uh, uh, we used. Now, one thing you're not doing that has been a staple for uh, every turtle story pretty much ever is the shredder yeah and um it's it's kind of you know awesome to see you pull away from that and just go hey well we have so many other you know uh no pun intended like toys to play <laughs> with here um what kind of informed that decision to get away from the most iconic villain of the series and focus on some of the others it was, it was it's a couple things it's uh uh 
Uh, Shredder is a big character and takes up uh, a lot of room in the story and is so is such a potent spice that when you have them in the movie, it just becomes all about that. And we had to do some play setting with the, the characters and like reintroduce audiences to them in this version of the Turtles. And uh, you know, Shredder is also an adult and he's a human and having a villain that was uh, a mutant and more similar to the turtles in their backstory uh, felt important and we got that with Superfly. All right, now let's talk about the, the casting because you've got just a ridiculously stacked voice cast yeah. here. I mean, you've got Jackie Chan as Splinter, you've got Ice Cube playing Superfly. Who knew, yeah. <laughs> Freaking Rose Byrne is Leatherhead, yeah, what? Yeah. Was there anybody that you got on the phone or you know got in the casting process who was like either just, I guess, what were their reactions? Were there any that kind of jumped out at you? No, I mean like like uh, Ice Cube, we had no idea what to expect if he was going to want to do it, if he was just taking the, the the call with us to be polite to Seth. But we like uh, uh, we're like okay, the character's name is Superfly, and he kind of like laughs and nods, and then we show him the character design, and then he's like. And we're like, I think we got him. I think Ice Cube's gonna say yes. He, see, he seems to like this. Um, and Jackie Chan is like, he, he, he's an icon. I adore him, I adore his films. He's so funny and, and no one does action comedy like he does. And he's also just like a really wonderful performer. And, and we're like, he's, he's like one of the biggest celebrities in the world. He's not gonna say yes to this. And then he did and we would record him at 6 a.m. Uh, our time because he was in Beijing and we would like drag ourselves out of bed like what do we oh, we got to talk to Jackie Chan and then we would leave those sessions like screaming we were so hyped up just like that was amazing he's so funny can you believe that we just talked to Jackie Chan for an hour <laughs> my voice gets really high <laughs> the, I'm the recent clip that, uh, that the studio just released about the turtle when where the turtles call him dad is just like yeah. the most adorable thing to me oh yeah thank you it, it's it's we we really wanted to ground the movie uh, uh Emotionally, like I think that that's a thing that's been underexplored in some of the films of the past. It's just like th th there's such an interesting family dynamic there. Like Splinter is a like surrogate father. He found them. They're not necessarily biologically related. Like it's he's a single dad raising four brothers, and and that's an emotional story. Uh New York City has always been the quintessential backdrop for these characters. Tell me a bit about like the the New York the version of New York we're getting here. This one we we it was really important to uh, to us to make it realistic. So many like depictions of New York in like the late 80s, early 90s in like the Ninja Turtles movies and like Batman movies is is like uh, moody, noir, gritty. And there's some of that here, but but really we we needed it to feel so authentically human that you would relate to the turtles aspiring to be in it and want to go out into the world. And it, it meant being really grounded uh, so that the audience could emotionally invest in the characters. Awesome. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, cannot wait for this movie. Yeah. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is in theaters on August 2nd. Uh, pizza is available at your local pizza joint right now, so go support that. Topping is not included. Uh, we've got lots more weird combination of things you love right here on IGN Live at Comic-Con, so stick around. <laughs>